All right. <clears throat> so this weekend I played the Norwegian Championship in Rapid Chess. Now I played for the first time last year, <clears throat> and went pretty well. And I decided to try again this year. In the first round, I'm playing a twenty-two hundred, and I'm playing black. Now I <clears throat> I played some. Sicilian and um, I don't really have much experience here. It's just that <clears throat> I feel like I had to win pretty much every game. The winning score is usually really high. Like maybe you can afford one loss across the tournament. <clears throat> now, I didn't really play the opening well at all. I somewhat I wanted to confuse him, but also <clears throat> I didn't know what to do. I should ju just play knight f6 here, and uh, then I have a fine position. This move is a little bit slow. Mm, this maneuver is pretty good. And now I'm already in some kind of trouble. Um, the problem is that I'm never stopping d4 and he will just run me over. <laughs> Probably queen c8 is objectively the start of the, my position, positional problems. But I was like, who cares about that? <clears throat> so I played really provocatively, placed the knight on a5, where it's uh, absolutely great. <clears throat> so really I'm just pretending, <laughs> I'm just hanging in there. And h5 now, bishop h6 was more annoying, <clears throat> because he has the central Dominance covered by the knight on e2, and probably, yeah, he played quite convincingly here. I just traded off the knights. I felt like I should trade some pieces, and here I castled, which is probably a mistake. But already this position is so dreadful. My strategy here was just that I wanted to provoke him to sacrifice and. He, got, he obliged. I think rook af1 is really safe. But he just gave me the pawn. And I took it of course. So that was my whole strategy. Provoke him into playing some double-edged position. Even if it wasn't objectively good. And uh, I found the only defense with queen e6. Now I'm still in the game, but uh, my position is really not good, <laughs> even if I won the pawn. So now I'm just trying to save my position. The problem is this bishop on g4. It really doesn't have a home. So h3, bishop f5, then I allow knight d5. <clears throat> so I think this move was a really big mistake should have taken first and if it takes back now I can play bishop f5 or d5 um, because I really need to get this bishop back to a safer diagonal as I played it I played d5 I understood that it was a mistake but um, the problem is knight c6 queen d6 and my knight is really I don't really have time for it so I just took and after h3 I saw the problem, but I kept going because he was forced to calculate sorrow. So now knight takes d5 is a pretty clear win. <clears throat> I was probably going to play f6, but 
after queen d6, queen d4, it's not probably queen d6. Yeah, I mean, I can pin the knight. It's totally losing, but you still have to finish me off. Like, yeah, f6, knight is 7 check. Yeah, that's the problem. And then you take on f5 with tempo on the queen. So it wasn't objectively working, but um, for black, I mean. But here we play g4, which is a really weird move. I think it was just annoyed that I was just in, still in the game. <clears throat> so I took it, and now he sacked the bishop. Now he could have gotten this with a bishop on g2 still, so... Um, was a little bit confusing. And after rook h2, I'm totally fine after queen g7. And here I, I felt that I couldn't do what I did, but somehow I still played it, which is... Uh, Sometimes happens. So I obviously I shouldn't save this knight. I have like ten different moves like I was show here. I can even just take the pawn. The problem I didn't really grasp was that after this move he has knight d5. Check king f2, take the knight and rook g1. Now I saw this but I I just assumed I would have a defense, but in fact I don't because this rook is perfectly placed and the queen is just coming home. Like, if I move the rook, probably that's necessary. Maybe I'm looking at rook c8. <clears throat> But I think it's losing. Maybe queen e5. Yeah, queen e5 is a problem. And if I. This bishop is loose here. And I can't move the f pawn. So this is just totally lost. <coughs> now instead of taking the. Moving the knight back, rook e8 was very nice. Because then I'm really threatening bishop 3. Like bishop f3, king f2 is still not um, not bad. If I play rook c8 or rook e8 here. Mm -mm. Yeah, but you have to see that. And, um, I mean, I just kept all my material. Like, I'm so greedy. Yeah, and f5 now I'm really winning. The point is that if he trades queens. He can win my um, exchange, sort of, but I was going to play king g8 and just play this position. Now it, I feel like this is totally a simple win, because you have two pieces and a pawn for a rook, and this pawn is just margin, and it's not like he has that much activity. I can play knight e4, rook f7, if he tries to activate the other rook. <clears throat> so he didn't go for that. Queen c6. I took. Now <clears throat> I'm just taking everything pretty much. And queen g6 is a key move. Now I'm pinning the knight. And rook f7 was the proper defense. Now I'm just cruising pretty much. And yeah, rook d8. And here I missed a pretty simple win. I could have played rook h7, rook h2, bishop f3 check. And I didn't grasp that I had this idea. But I just, like, come on. <laughs> now I'm up a piece and have the attack, so I got the knight into play. Now, king at qu stopping queen h4, but... Rook h7 was also good. And here I offer the queen trade and the um, game is over pretty much. And here he just allowed the mate to move on. I mean, he could trade down, but that's <clears throat> really hopeless. Yeah, that's 
so next game uh, yeah so in in the second round I met an I am one of the strongest I am in Norway and I I was playing white he played the Queen's Gambit accepted and I played e4 but really I didn't have much preparation or anything I I played it a long while ago but not many people accept the gambit and uh, I mean I get the spatial advantage I think bishop f5 is the better move and I remember that but I was I'm still kind of happy to play this position <coughs> Sometimes allowed to give up the bishop pair with bishop e3, but um, you get the open f file and it's a at least equal. <clears throat> so the, what I really want to emphasize is like knight a5 is a really key idea, like placing a knight on c4. But before I commit the bishop, then it's not really useful, and that's why. I play a3 here, so now I'm preparing bishop a2 and bishop b3. So knight a5, knight c4 is only working because of temp the tempo on the bishop. <clears throat> so now I'm getting out of that idea. Bishop b3 comes just in time, and f6, now I, I have time to support the center. Now here I had a, an interesting choice, I could have taken with the d pawn. I thought he could play queen e8 or even queen takes d1. Yeah, it wasn't so simple to win, so I just played the most complicated capture. Now g5 is probably a little bit weakening, but uh, not a bad move. Now I was really tempted by rook f5, and it's very interesting indeed. Like you get a lot of. Uh, I think it, queen a4 was the move, yeah. Yeah, this is probably good enough for equality, but uh, I saw this queen e8 and I was like, nah, probably hold, keep that one in reserve. So I played queen e1. Now I think this allows bishop d3, but if not, I don't really get what I want. Like, if I play a neutral move, he just waits. And. Now I don't really see my plan going forward, probably it's still fine, but I didn't really want to play like that, so I wanted the rook in play, so bishop d3 was probably the better try. Now if you play this, I was going to play bishop b1, uh, just to keep the bishop, because I really don't want to trade, I could play b3 too, but then bishop and knight d5 is really good. I mean, it's not over, but um, it's not pretty at all, but you sometimes have to do it. Like bishop b1, you're giving away bishop b3, knight c4. So it's not really nice, but I really didn't want to trade lies current bishops. And he played rook f8. Now after rook d1 I felt my position was really nice. Now bishop f5 is stopping me from grabbing this pawn I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> but also some more about protecting e6. So now I played king h1. So that renews the threat of bishop, bishop g5. In the other position knight d4, knight e2 was with check. Now he protects with h6. Now I was thinking about bishop g1 here, which is very. The idea is rook f5 and then d5 when f4 is not a fork on my queen and bishop. And also just getting out of the way in general. I play b4, so now I'm stopping and knight a5 and queen f3. Now this was very intuitive, but. I just was getting low on time here. So after bishop g7 I felt like 
I don't want to think about this too much. Now I think I have a great position here with either knight g3, b5, anything really. <clears throat> now I just played queen g3 because um, I'm pretty much just saying now I I don't have time to waste my time finding a good plan. Like queen f3 was so natural to me and I think it was nice but um, I didn't really have the guts to just play intuitively through the game. So knight e7 and I played h4 so now I'm just going right after the pawn, <laughs> whatever the cost. Now here he should have played knight c3 but that's really not intuitive. I think he grabbed the bishop pretty much on instinct, I thought he would do that as well. And I saw this variation and I thought yeah let's grab the pawn. So now I'm a pawn up. And here I found the only move, knight f4, I think it was here, right? He could have played a little bit better, not recalling precisely, but yeah, this was a tough move as to face as well, but knight f4 is sufficient. Now, um, bishop b1 is objectively a mistake. So now I'm kind of hinting at bishop f3, now bishop b6, um, knight e6, bishop b3 checking h1, but he gets out of the way and now I can't really take because bishop f4, <coughs> bishop f4, queen h7, bishop b3, check, and then pick up the bishop, I mean the queen, that's up a piece, I get some compensation but it's not enough. So I played bishop b1, now... I kind of felt that it was wrong because I'm allowing the knight in, but here it made a mistake. You should have just grabbed my, grabbed my bishop immediately. And now, probably knight c4 or knight d5. Yeah, knight d5, I think. Take, take. You're setting up bishop b3 check, that's just the idea. Okay, so you grab my bishop, which I think is a mistake. And now, yeah, he could have played knight d5 here. No, knight d5, queen, f queen f8, yeah. Queen g6, queen f3. <clears throat> I think he's probably making a loop there was better, right? <clears throat> yeah, anyway. So, if he had made loop immediately, knight c3, knight c4 or knight d5. Now I'm now I was feeling good about my position again, and here I made a critical mistake. I played queen f2. That was just time trouble. I was I had intended knight c5, but then queen takes d4 check. Like um, knight c5, c6. Then I just grab b6, and queen f2 was uh, just with like seconds on the clock. Now rook d1 is still really nice for me, probably is, it's equal objectively but I really like my position, I have this potential pass pawn and uh, I'm not really feeling, I'm feeling that the black king is in fact a little bit weaker, but I, I'd say still equal. Now I just hung this pawn and now I'm clearly worse, but I still have my position in main position intact. This structure. Now rook rook g4 was probably a mistake. Should have played knight e5. And knight c5 is just in time, so probably I'm drawing after queen d4. <clears throat> so he played queen g6, and then b5, and I'm preparing opening up lines. He could have taken it, but that's just a draw. And now I was like, nah, let's go for the win. Because I, I saw queen f8, queen c8, like in the game. And then uh, rook, rook g2, king h1, and it's just a draw. He has to give up the rook. With rook h2 and give up perpetual. <coughs> but I was like, I was gambling really badly. <laughs> Now knight f4 is probably winning. I still have queen f3, rook g2, king f1. 
somehow staying in, in the game, but C6 is uh, really stronger. I didn't see that, so I, I went for it. And now B6 is a big blunder. <clears throat> now I'm, I'm mating for. <laughs> okay, H1 and Queen F8. And here I thought it was just mate, so I stopped the clock and apologized to my opponent because he had Queen E8. Yeah, that was. That was, I was the, for a long time I was the only one player to beat this guy, so he was he went like six old next six rounds. <clears throat> anyway, all right. So in round three I went, met another I am. Now I met him last year as well when I obtained a winning position and I failed failed to convert. And this year I tried something different. I played a Sicilian. Now my idea against the C3 Sicilian was just I'll go for the IQP and just play this one. Even if I'm, it's like down a half tempo if you can say that. Like it's like playing the Pano where you just take on C4. <clears throat> but I. I found this to be right up my alley, like it's a position I enjoy. Now here I could have played knight c6, now as I was considering that, but um, I was like bishop e3, not so simple, but bishop d6 was apparently a good move. <clears throat> so I just played for the position, and here I've played an important move, I think, queen b6. I really want to keep control over d5. Now if he grabs the pawn, then I can choose queen b2 or bishop b6. I was actually going to play queen b2 because it was the most double-edged move. But even so, bishop, bishop b6, queen e4, queen b5 was a really nice compensation. So I was like, yeah, you can have that pawn. So he spent a long time and finally traded. And here I've made a mistake. I shouldn't play a6. I should just play rook d8, but anyway, so the game go, goes on. h6 is really important because in some variation when I um, play knight d5, knight d5, knight d5, like if he moves knight, knight d5, take, and I want to take with the rook when he's, if he sacks a piece or something. And then rook c8, I can play rook, c8, rook takes c8, king h7. <clears throat> now rook b8, bishop f4 was the critical move. Now I was thinking about, I was just going to play rook a8. And kind of silently offer a draw because the d4 pawn is hanging. So we play g4. And here I could have played knight d5. I just didn't want to simplify the position. So I, I played bishop d7, which is in fact a mistake. Um, he could have played d5. Now I just missed the final move. Like he takes everything and plays bishop b6, and I can't protect the bishop. So I'm going down the exchange here. You still have some drawing chances, but it's really not a good position. He missed it and played king g2, but now I'm I have a really nice position. So I kind of um, got away with one there. Knight e5, knight e4, and I took it. I could have played knight e3 and knight e5, but that's too concrete for me. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's trade. Bishop a4, and now he's forced to give up the file or the bishop. Like rook c4, bishop b3, bishop d5, take, and um, rook c3. And now I have, I feel like, a really nice position. Basically, he's just going for a draw here. Now, I, <laughs> the reason why I didn't play b6 is knight b4, but I can really just take it and go for this position, and it should be excellent winning chances. Something like this. <clears throat> now, <sighs> I was really trying to win, so I played a5, bishop c6, rook c2, and now the critical move, bishop b8. So now I'm getting the end game. Now rook c4 was interesting, but it still has 95 or anything. Like 
like knight f4 also and now g5 a very important move i don't want to allow bishop f4 or knight f4 so we played f4 now bishop b5 98 91 king g7 knight, is, knight f3 f6 and after h4 i played a i played the right move i played h5 and uh, my idea was hg5 hd4 the reason why i didn't play it in the end was uh, like gf6 and i would like bishop f6 95 that's just a draw so then i just bailed out pretty much but king f6 is totally winning here like king f5 now bishop e2 and this position is dreadful i mean you are you will be so lucky to survive this <clears throat> So I had the right idea, but um, in the end, probably my time was uh, the key factor in, in this position as, as well. So I just seemed to fight into a draw. So bishop e2, bishop d6, and uh, this is just a draw. So now we're on two and a half. And um, game four I met my third master in a row so I'm playing white and uh, I think he took third overall in the end I was the only player to beat him uh, queen b6, e3 now queen b6 is a little bit odd I have some nice in fact he likes to play the a6 slot and I had some really nice preparation there so I was a little bit sad about queen b6 but at the same time um, not bad like I, I get to test my technical skills so he just gave me the bishop pair and now I was thinking he would play dc4 and knight d7 and play this position it's a little bit um, more solid and after I play b3 it's a little bit harder to release the tension I mean I uh, get the safe position for black rook d8, bishop b2, rook e8 and here I probably made a mistake I was thinking about g4 in the previous positions as well but here it seems like it's really nice like e4 I was a little bit rushed I could have tried to improve this uh, situation even more like if it tries e5, cd5, cd5, e5, knight e5, knight e5 and I just grab the pawn I saw that as well so mm, I was just playing on momentum like e4 is a really nice move queen d4 and then knight d5 so he took it <coughs> bishop c3 is uh, just a safe move and, uh, some really the idea is queen h5 queen takes a5 or bishop a5 so we play knight f8 queen e3 and now i'm just protecting the pawn for the moment and a3 looking to expand with b4 I was also contemplating b4 immediately, but I felt like I just wanted to keep the structure. Long term, I um, I made a conscious conscious decision not to mm, ruin my structure in rapid chess because really it's hard to play. <clears throat> Probably I had a little bit of a, I had some better ideas. Now I'm. A little bit stuck but still it's totally fine so now I'm just stopping this 97 maneuver because the h7 pawn is hanging <clears throat> and here probably he had his chance to kind of equalize <clears throat> with c5 I was going to play queen e3 take and he can just swap everything and um, probably hold a draw but I still have the 3 on 2 majority on the queen side 
So I wasn't too afraid of that. But still probably the best chance. <clears throat> After Queen B6 H4 now the position is really difficult to play. He's pretty much um, forced to wait because uh, he really doesn't have c5 or e5. <clears throat> queen e6, bishop b3, queen b6. So he's obviously just waiting for me. And I just kept pushing. <coughs> now h5. Probably rook a1 was um, a good idea, but I like this move. So I want to stop knight g6, knight e7, knight e5. Um, and just expand. So bishop e2, now I'm taking away all the entry squares. And queen g4 is uh, it's a little bit cheap, but at the same time it's hard to stop. So he kind of fell for it. Play rook e8. Now if he plays any random move, probably b6 is the best move. But then I just place this position. <coughs> so he played rook e8, and now probably the move that won me the game. So I played d5. The idea with queen g4 is that now I'm threatening to take the bishop. So this is discovery with a real threat. So he takes, and now d6. This protected pass pawn is really strong. And now he's regrouping. Rook d2, just a safe move, protecting the rooks. <coughs> Bishop c2, queen f6, and now queen e4. I think queen f6 was slightly inaccurate. But it's hard at, at this point because he can't really activate the queen. <coughs> so queen e4 now is kind of forced to play knight f8, which is the wrong direction for a knight. He really wants knight f6 to d5 or attacking my pawns. <clears throat> Play bishop e1, queen g5, and queen e2. Probably bishop b1 was slightly inaccurate. <clears throat> I could have played bishop d1 or rook b3. <clears throat> so I protected the pawn. Now I figured out my mistake, so I just protected the h pawn. It's a little bit awkward, but at the same time, it's not easy for him to play because he has this d6 thorn pawn. Rook a1, rook d2, and now I could keep playing with like um, bishop c2, but <clears throat> at this point I wasn't too worried about the draw. He could play queen d5, but it's a forced draw if he doesn't play queen a3. Now here I was going to play rook f4, I just missed queen f3 basically, um, so the idea was queen c2, rook f6, take the knight, and this d6 pawn prevents the king from running, so queen f3 was the only move, and now queen d3 offering the queen trade, and I'm just going for the really nice endgame, he should probably have traded, but um, Played queen d5 and then I took it. <clears throat> and now I played b5. Bishop f5 is a cold move, like just stopping knight e7. <clears throat> but I I was just playing on momentum here. And probably knight e7 is the only try, but um, rook b4 is a really good move. Uh, now I didn't see that, of course. I was considering it, but not in that position. So he took it, and now I'm just totally winning. <coughs> he goes on for some counterplay. Now rook hp4 is a really cool move, and uh, it's a pretty simple win. Rook c1, and just queen the pawn, or check. I play bishop d3. Now, here I was low on time, so I just played the practical move. I could have played bishop f5 or rook d4. I was looking at rook d4 and uh, I, w I really liked it, but <clears throat> I wasn't totally. Um, I didn't see what was wrong with my move, so I just played it. Now, here, the way to draw was rook h1, and now 
King F3, this is a really funny, funny idea. So this is, I think this was drawing, but it's not simple even then. Like, down a piece, these pawns are running. So he has to find these perpetual ideas. I mean, one line I saw was that, like, he plays both rooks to the 8th rank, and then gives up a rook to get both pawns, and then he tries to hold the uh, knight, knight versus rook. 3 versus 3, or 3 versus 4, black has 4 pawns. Now in the game he took the bishop, which is a mistake, and now I'm really winning. Um, probably rook, C, rook b8 check was a little bit inaccurate, because rook e2, rook f4, knight e4, rook f7, knight f2, take... Yeah, this was winning, wasn't it? Like... Yeah, I think this was winning. Yeah, but it's a hard winning line and I probably wouldn't have found it. I think... Or was this the draw? Like, Yeah, I think this is the draw. Because you can suck the rook for the pawn. And it, it's like one tempo in time. But no one will find that. Five seconds on the clock. We were just both in time trouble here. And now I'm just winning. Um... He has some spite checks, and finally, after king g4, he ran out of time, but really it's made in, made in 6, I think. Now, the, the cool stuff is like, king f5, g6, king f6. Now, this is really nice. So I'm just running the king all the way up, and he doesn't have it. Like, he's just short. Alright, so we, now I'm... This is like... Four rounds is how far I'm physically capable of playing. Like now, I was getting really tired, and I think it showed in my game. I was burning time in a position I really know quite well. So I played another in an international master, and here I should just play a four. Now I know this of course, and the point is that I kind of gain a tempo, because he's forced to play a6, in the game I allowed him the same variation but with a5 in one move, like if he plays a5 here now I have rook b5, and um, yeah so a4 is a much better move, I play rook b1, now it's still not bad, um, and here play knight d1, probably knight a4 was slightly more accurate, and now I really didn't like this position. I just took the pawn, and I mean took the knight, but um, objectively rook c1 is just fine, king h1 also, oh sorry, so you have to go, but um, e3, d3, knight e2. I think this was a good practical decision. I want knight e4, knight c6. So he played knight, knight e4, and here he played a. I mean, it's just a nice shot, but knight e5 he played. I think it's probably not the best move, but it was a shocker. So I take the rook, knight f4, and here I made a, a big blunder. <coughs> I, I saw that I could take the knight, of course, and uh, probably I can draw that game. But I was like, I don't see what's wrong with this, so I took the b3 pawn. Now if he doesn't have it, then I'm really just better here. So, uh, But after queen g5, I understood that I had blundered really badly. So now the idea is that knight h3 check picks up my queen. So if my queen was protected, this would be totally fine, then I just play a4, uh, <clears throat> but as it happens I, I'm just totally lost now, I, I overlooked queen g5, and probably that was the end of my winning chances in the tournament, but still, I, I've defended quite well I think, um, now here I was considering g3, and it was probably the best decision, and 
here the bishop is finally trapped, but bishop b4 is still better for black and knight c5. And probably I'm losing this endgame. <clears throat> but that needs a little closing material. So g3 would have been a good try. Um, I played rook e1, so I was pretty protecting the e3 knight. But now he can just play this. And funnily, I, I, g3 was the only move. But here he could have played bishop g2, king g1, bishop f3, rook f3, knight h3, winning my queen. So bishop g2, bishop f3 was winning. Um, but he, here he just played it safe. And now I'm back in the game somewhat. I, I mean, not really, but I have a rook for two pieces, so practically I'm fine. I mean, back in the game. I, w I was going to play rook b7, but I realized king g8, I realized king g8. Now I'm not really having uh, a good move because my rook is pinned. Like queen e1, even knight e4, I don't know. No, queen e1, bishop back, like anywhere. Bishop h3, bishop c4, they all work. So I pretty much had enough and just played queen d6, rook d8, and my problem was that I had overlooked that c7 was protected, like knight c7. Uh, my idea after rook d8 was to attack f7 of course. And the second blunder was that here I intended rook b1, but in, then it just takes and my e3 rook is hanging. So that, was, that e3 rook was so dumb. <laughs> yeah, and after this I just played queen e7 and resigned after bishop h3. That was my big mistake was just not playing a4. And I know that, so it was a lot of mental fatigue, really. Now in the last round of the day, in the sixth round, I was playing black against uh, another strong international master, and um, I had I had a clearly. Now I should mention after round four, I was. Uh, leading the tournament, like, uh, you can see the results here, I'll just go to round 4, so here I'm leading, like, uh, ahead of some really good players, I had a rating performance at 25-28 at that point, so I was happy with that, now my Rating opposition was the strongest by far, like 22.59. Um, yeah, so that's why I was leading because I had a really tough uh, opposition. That was partially because I'm I'm really low rated. Like in rapid chess, my rating is still 18, 1800. And that's because I just played two tournaments <laughs> in rapid. And I played a somewhat um, a sideline in the semis now with b6, and I I know this variation quite well. C5 take take, and here bishop b7 is forced. Rook d1, queen e7. I mean queen c7 is also interesting, but I. I like queen e7, knight e5, and now really important move, rook d8, knight g4, bishop d4. And after bishop b1, I was thinking about h6. The problem I had was like knight f6, bishop f6, queen c2, g6, take. And I didn't really like it because I'm down a pawn. But in fact, the computer says that I can just play this position and I'm totally fine. Like, the long diagonal is a problem and the h pawn is not that important. But I played queen c5, which is the really active move. Knight f6, gf6. Now, I had burned a lot of time here and it was partially because I was tired and also because I was like, I don't want to blunder here. <laughs> so he played bishop h4. I think bishop f4 is slightly more accurate. But still I think I played well at this point. And here I should play king f8. 
probably B3 um, to cover the pawn. Like, uh, funny, the funny thing is that Queen C6 is the idea. And you're pinning the pawn and then threatening mate. So Queen G4 is forced, but then you grab B2 and the structure is really bad on the queen side. Now, up to this point, up to this point, we have followed the Grandmaster game, I think. And I played King H8, but I really knew that King H1 was a good move. He played Queen C2, which I thought, which I thought was a mistake. I played F5, and after Bishop D8, Queen C6. And now he's in big trouble. His only move is Bishop F6, King G8, Queen E4. So now I'm up a queen. And uh, here I was thinking quite... I had like one minute left here, and I was thinking about bishop f2, and I should have played that. I think that's winning really sim really easily. Um, but I just took the queen and played queen c5. This is still good, but here I made I had no time and just panicked. I should just play and make luft when my position is objectively winning. Um, I played rook f8, but the problem was rook d8, yeah? and I saw the defense with bishop c6, but now he can play bishop e4, bishop b8, and I'm a little bit stuck. I played the best move for at least queen h5. <coughs> Probably queen a5. <coughs> Sorry. Queen f5 is slightly better. <clears throat> You're just keeping up the pressure. But that's hard to see. I wanted to break the blockade. Now here I was I was going to play f6, but um I I wrongly <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Yeah, like this kind of thing is a uh, really good winning chances for black. <clears throat> now I played f5, which objectively is not a bad move, but practically it was a mi probably a mistake. Now here I should play e5, and um, yeah, I think the position is slightly better for black. I mean, uh, white should still be in the game, but it's hard to play. <clears throat> I play bishop h5, but now bishop... I mean, the position is still equal here, but queen g5 was probably a mistake. Now I'm allowing him out, and h5 was another mistake. And now my queen is out of play, and um, I really don't have anything. And here I played, here I played the completely worst move. <laughs> I had no time, but still. Um, I was more annoyed that I didn't win it than that actually playing, trying to play good moves. So after rook h, uh, rook a1, rook a8, I can just resign <coughs> because I lose the queen. All right, that was a really tough end to the first day. But, um, I mean, really, the two games I won were really nice, and I think I played quite well. Now, the second day, we have four games, <coughs> and I played somewhat a young player, born in 2004, I think the best Norwegian player, and he played this G3 thing, and I was like, yeah. Let's go d5. And I played bishop f5, which is a little bit quite ambitious. I could play something else as well. But <clears throat> Probably queen d7 is slightly better. Just intending bishop h3 immediately. Just to neutral neutralize the pressure. I played rook c8, which is a fine move. 
Yeah, probably knight a3 was a little bit better. h6, bishop e3, castle, g5. Now here I think I made a mistake. Probably b6 is better. And just part the uh, knight on d4. I play knight d5, it's not a not a bad move. But here knight d4 was a very interesting move. Probably queen d1 is the best. And then I can at least take a draw. But, um, I played d4. Uh, I thought about knight d4, but um, I thought this looks fine. Now here I should have played c4, and I saw it really right after I played it. Like c4 here is equalizing. <clears throat> I played queen b6, and it was first he was looking to grab his rook, but then I have c4, which is really strong. So he played b3, and now I played a mistake probably, queen c7. I was just getting low on time again. In this game I had 5 minutes time mods, because I was late for the round. And now I played f5, because I really wanted to stop f4, f5. Objectively it's not the best, but his response was bad. Now I have 97. Probably I'm equalizing here, but... It's still tricky because b6. Um, I'm not quite equal because he has so active rooks, but this should be a draw. So here I just simplified. I saw the variation we will, we would play. Like rook e8 is a really critical move, and now I'm just going into the end game down upon. But in fact, I I really don't have losing. I'm really not losing here. Because all my pawns are on dark squares. Now here I probably should have played g5. <coughs> the idea is... In fact here I'm getting winning chances. Um, like... Uh, it should be a draw, yeah. But <coughs> if it doesn't play... If it doesn't simplify it here, then I'm really getting h4. Then I'm probably winning. So I played bishop d7, and uh, <coughs> <coughs> here I made a little bit of a mistake. I played bishop e6, which allows b4. I should have played h5 again, or a5. I, I just wanted to kind of stop c3, but that's just uh, nonsense. So I gave him b4. Like if I <coughs> wait with a h5 and now he plays b4, then I'm really getting a winning position. So um, I'm really a little bit disappointed that I uh, played bishop e6, but I was so low on time, so it's understandable. And I played the only moves, um, king e6, and here king e7. Just waiting moves is very important. <clears throat> now king e4, you just play king d6 back. King f6 feels natural, but then you're really getting in trouble. <coughs> the king should stay in front of the pawns. The key drawing idea here is king f4, a6. Now it's a little bit counterintuitive, but king g5, bishop h3. I mean, this is just great. <coughs> so now you're grabbing the pawn, and... Um, just in time you're trading off the pawns. So you played d5, but now it's a, a simple draw basically. And here um, I calculated it just fine, I mean, if he takes he loses by one tempo, because I queen and his pawn is on h7. Um, and that's because my pawn was so advanced, and his pawn is easily accessible. And here I played king c7. King b6 and b5, and here I flagged. <coughs> it was just because I was like, ah, what? <laughs> but really, it's still a draw. <coughs> I played, no, I didn't flag here, right? I played bishop b6, king h5, king h4, and then I flagged. I was going to play bishop d7, and now king g3 is forced because king g5, I take the pawn. Um, but really, I was also uh, considering king c5 here. And this is also a draw, with the same idea. Um, you're just going for the h-pawn, 
and then you can grab b5 and simplify to a draw. Now, I think <coughs> here bishop e6, and here bishop h3 is a real nice draw. King h3, a5, uh, no, wait, um, no, no, no. Yeah, like here, if it doesn't play b5, then I play bishop e6, king h4, bishop takes h3, king b6, a5. Like, um, not in that order, I should play king b6 first, of course. <clears throat> yeah, but I here I just fight, and uh, it, it really doesn't matter anymore, but I was a little bit in low spirits. Now I am <clears throat> playing white. <clears throat> so this is round 7, no, 8, and I, I just played the uh, boring, <laughs> played some uh, stonewall setup, I played 8-3, and uh, um, yeah, I think this was a good move, I want him to trade, then play a4, bishop a3, etc. He trades, bishop a5, and now cd5. Now I'm just winning. The point is knight d5, and um, the bishop is loose. So you play queen h4, knight f4, knight g5, and here I thought, I thought for quite a while after queen h4, I should have just played quicker. I knew knight f4 was the right move. So you play knight g5, and I played bishop c4. Now this was probably a, it was a mistake. I should have just played d5, of course. And now um, he can't take because I just win the bishop. So this is pretty much over. <clears throat> now after king h8 I realized my mistake and I played queen b5. Good move. Now I'm getting developed. Play bishop b1 and then bishop a5. This was a mistake, a, a really big mistake. I should just play a4 and uh, try to hit this bishop. I mean this bishop is really dead hitting all my pawns. He needs to move the knight and play g5, but he doesn't have the time because moving this knight, like he doesn't have the opportunity. I mean, because queen b6 now I'm hitting the pawn. Yeah, bishop a5 was a really big mistake. So now he's kind of back in the game. I'm still a lot better, but practical chances. <clears throat> so here I. Here I should have played rook e1, I, 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 it's just getting low on time. And here I, my opponent played a move that he dropped the pawn, so I stopped the clock and mm, asked for a minute, because extra minute, because he, <coughs> he made an illegal move. I thought it was two minutes extra, but uh, I was just given one minute. Well, one minute was enough for me. And there I just gambled like crazy. I grabbed all the pawns. Uh, rook c8 and rook c3 is really critical. Here he should have played yeah, g4, I think. Yeah. And then my king is really weak, even if I'm up three pawns or two. And here I played really well in the time scramble, uh, like keeping control of everything. Now he's just going for g pose. And king g1 is sufficient. And I finished the game really nice, nicely, I think. <coughs> Queen e2, and I just grabbed. And rook f2 is a cold win. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> round. I saw that my, my round 9 opponent played this um, setup, so I just. Felt like going for uh, King's Indian for black. Um, so we'll just keep going really fast. I think the, I, I made a mistake here. I should play rook b8. I knew that, of course, but rook c8 is also fine. And here I, um, here I really should play h6. There really isn't anything else. Uh, I just misevaluated how to play. Like um, here, 
he just parks the bishop on f6 and I'm really in trouble. I mean, queen a5 is, was the only move because I need counterplay on the c3 pawn and then they play knight d4 before this knight gets knight g5. Um, now here I had the tactical shot, knight d4. I missed it, now the idea was b3. Um, so I played queen b5 and really I was just uh, shuffling here, I, I was low on time and just was ready to get over with the game. <clears throat> yeah, and here it's just over. I mean, there's not much to say. And there I resigned. So really it was just a mental error again. I didn't play that kind of position many times. So, but I, I think it was a good decision to play it, nonetheless. In the last round I played a, a very sharp, sharp line, I just wanted to have some fun. Now he responded boringly, so I just castled. And here I here I made a mistake. <laughs> I should play knight d2. Like he touched his b pawn here, which I, I thought he wanted to play b5, but I just take that. And here knight d2 is really strong. I failed to appreciate what he could do with dc4. Now here I made a mistake, I should play e4. The reason I didn't was I thought e5, but I just had b5 of course. And also bishop h2 is a little bit tricky, but rook h1 is very good. So I played bishop g3. And e5, here I play the re I think e5 is very uh, bad should play knight g4. Now after e5 I play the best move, knight e5. Now the critical move is rook e5 and I was thinking about it for a moment but after rook e5 I have bishop e2 which is a really really nice intermediate move. If I take back then knight g4 is really a big problem. So um, I think I calculated well in this game except that I I played really practical, I played fast, so I had enough time to think later in the technical part. I think knight d5 is a mistake, because you're just giving me an isolated pawn. And here I play, probably made a mistake, I rushed into winning the pawn. I should just um, play rook d4, king f1, king, king e1, keep improving my position. But I, I just took the pawn, I mean... <laughs> I still have some small winning chances. Now here the only move is rook c1, rook c1 check. King h2, h5 and rook e2. This is the... Uh, don't play king h3, then you get mated with rook h1. <clears throat> so rook e2 is the only winning idea. And now you're intending like e4, f3 and then maybe g4 and suck a pawn. When you, you're get, going for activity. <clears throat> So my opponent played f5, which is a big mistake. Now I get king f1. Um, and now I'm really winning. And I think I played a really good game from here on out. Like technically this was all the way sound, I think. Like um, taking this as well. And here I get rook d4. He has to move the rook here, but then I'm still going. I'm going rook d3, and here I'm winning the pawn because this pin with the, <clears throat> like b3 or b4, depending on where it goes, like king a1, b3, and I'm totally winning with the passed pawn. So um, I got won the pawn just cleanly, and now uh, yeah, we just play some fast moves. And this is a pretty simple win, the king is cut, and I just push my b-pawn. Now I, I could have played more accurate, but I well, I had control all the way. <clears throat> now king a3 was a really nice move here. But um, I played rook c3, king d6, king b5, rook g2, rook d3. And here the star move of the endgame, I think, rook d4. And now... <clears throat> the point is that the king is cut, 
So if it checks me, I can offer the trade. And if it goes back with the king, I just march in. And then promote the pawn, basically. When the king is cut, like, he can't sack his rook and try to promote the pawns. Uh, so he played a check, and now I'm just winning the endgame. Um, one tempo in time, like here. King a7 and it's over. So we play g5. And uh, yeah, here he resigned. So it was a good experience, I would say. But um, I also got a little bit sick. Like. Uh, but the, the, for the most part it was that I was tired, like I had uh, worked all week <laughs> and uh, it was, I didn't, re I didn't really prepare specifically for the tournament um, and I think just my energy was uh, the reason why I, <clears throat> why I didn't uh, Hang on with my to my lead for the to the end. So in the end, I uh, I got I after the streak of three losses, it was really really over. But um, I still ended in twenty second place. I think I got uh, it was up like four places from last year. But um, this year I played much better. I mean, I had much stronger opposition, like 2191 rating average on my opposition is the second highest. Only this I am in fifth place at a higher rating opposition. Yeah, anyway, so um, I hope you enjoyed my coverage of my participation. I'm probably, I'm not going to play many tournaments this year, so... At least until the uh, the fall. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, really, uh, my first day performance was really nice, and uh, I also played good on, in the last day. But I lost one on time and um, one where I just really time pro time tr pressure is the reason why I lost many of the games. <clears throat> Probably my worst game was the fourth fourth round game when I lost. Um, No, fifth round game. <clears throat> when I lost to the second place finish. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I see you for the four player chess um, losers bracket. So it's coming up like next week, I think. So we're still in it to win it. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. See you.